Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, taxi driver dies in horrific accident. Hate speech under investigation by police. And presiding officers warned of social media influence. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. A taxi driver died this morning when the vehicle he was driving collided head-on with the bus carrying more than 80 passengers. The incident happened in the Voilevo Nausori. Ali Kimbia was at the scene this morning. Residents along the Andindaville Road in the Voilevo gathered on the roadside this morning to see the records after the fatal accident. The taxi driver, believed to be in his mid-30s, died on the spot while his passenger was injured and is now admitted at the hospital. When the accident happened, I was walking along the road. I ran to, uh, to the scene, then what I saw was this woman trying to come out of the car and at the same time calling for help. I told residents standing nearby to help me by helping the woman because the driver was covered in blood. FBC News arrived at the scene. Police were still looking for evidence to determine the cause of the accident. Blood stains and the decapitated body were still in the fully damaged car. Vakalala Koro says some bus passengers were injured and with the help of nearby residents were taken to the hospital. The woman in the car told me that she was feeling some pain in her body and as well as some of some other passengers in the bus. We stopped a private car to take the woman and some passengers to the Nosori hospital. Taxi owner Muhammad Iqbal says the accident happened just after he spoke with the driver on the phone and he could not believe what happened. I know my driver about my driver. Driver driving very slow before. When I give nighttime driver driving taxi for me, so when I go on the way somewhere, I see my driver driving very slow. But today I got one big shock because this kind of accident is very big accident. This is where the accident happened this morning along the Ndabuilebu housing road near Mataik road. As you can see behind me, people are still crowding uh, to the vehicle that was involved in the accidents. And according to the residents living nearby, they are still in shock as this is for the first time ever a fatal accident such as this happened along the Ndabuilebu housing road. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Meanwhile, a directive has been issued to the Divisional Police Commander East to look into the conduct of certain members of the public at the accident scene this morning. Chief of Intelligence ACP Mbiu Matavo says the manner in which some people took photos of the victim, even to the extent of posing with the victim's decapitated limbs, is shameful and disrespectful. ACP Matavo said once police cordon off a crime scene, it becomes an immediate breach of the law for anyone to enter the restricted area or interfere with the investigation. He says the police has also received ghoulish photos showing a person holding up what is supposedly the decapitated limb of the victim. Matavo says this is not only illegal, but a major health concern. Police are currently investigating some reports of hate speech circulating on social media, which has become a growing concern in the country. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Benengilio says with general elections nearing, posts that can likely spread hatred are increasing. Akusita Tale reports. The police commissioner says hate speeches mostly posted from fake accounts are troubling as it can lead to other issues which can incite people to conduct criminal acts. Yes, we are investigating some now uh, and I have directed that we pick this up a uh, few cases so that we can investigate and process it through the courts so that it can be a deterrent to others. It's worrying. We are building up to elections and we don't want anything. Uh, to, to spoil uh, or to, uh, to, uh, to disrupt uh, the election process.
The police chief says people can give their views or criticize policies, but posts that can create tension will be dealt with by the force. Those that have been reported to us, uh, we, are, we are pursuing that, uh, and we'll have to monitor that more closely. But you're right, uh, it has spiked recently. I'm very, very thankful that the police is being very vigilant. They're investigating this matter, and I seriously hope that people who are you know, spreading and advocating hate speech are taken to task. They need to face the full brunt of the law. The Director of Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission also slammed those posting hate speeches, claiming they are not from ordinary Fijians. Because these are rich, powerful people. All they do is they sit and divide the whole day and take to the social media and run all kinds of statements without realizing the damage it does to the people. Who pays the price for hate speeches and advocacy of hatred? Ordinary folks in villages and communities. Raj has also confirmed they have received numerous reports against hate speech which have been forwarded to the police. The public is also urged to lodge a complaint if they come across any such post. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Former journalist Stanley Simpson has confirmed that a video circulating on social media of his 2014 interview with Prime Minister Wurenge Mbaini Marama is heavily edited. Simpson says some of the edits put Mbaini Marama's answers out of context. Ali Kimbia reports. Uh, no. The doctored video was an old talkback show on Fiji Television Limited in which former journalist Stanley Simpson was questioning Baini Marama on the manifesto of the Fiji First Party prior to the 2014 general elections. It was uh, a real interview, but uh, the video that was going around now was heavily edited. Uh, and in editing it, uh, those that did the video took some of the PM's comments out of context. Opposition and Sodelpa MP Moshe Simbulitabo was one who shared the video. He says it was not produced or edited by Sodelpa. First I want to clarify I'm not the producer of that video. No, I am in the team or Sodelpa is the producer of that video. Or we had edited, we are all part. We found that, that video already circulating in social media, so we picked it up from there. You, uh... The edited video accuses the Prime Minister of deceiving the Itoke people. Bulitavo claims it is true, however Simpson says it was edited and manipulated. Reading from the nature of the interview that was with Stanley that was circulated in this uh, social media, I, I believe it was true. Uh, and it was unfortunate that they did that. Uh, if they wanted to make a point on some of the PM's answers, I think there was uh, material there for them to use, but they did not need to uh, manipulate uh, or doctor it. Simpson says he will not give his opinion on how PM answered his questions, but he was happy that Mbaini Marama took everything on. Alikimbia, FBC News. The Fijian Elections Office has warned presiding officers not to be influenced by external factors while conducting their task. Election Supervisor Mohamed Sinim reminded the officials not to change the order of the events during polling day just because critics on social media are questioning the electoral process. Rachel Nath reports. The presiding officers were warned not to improvise or invent new processes to suit their own agenda. Actually, you may find several individuals who may try this. They will create false rumors. They will make unsubstantiated claims just to earn the sympathy or even some votes. It is mine and my communication team's responsibility to deal with these public relations matters. The election supervisor stressed that all election officials must remain apolitical at all times. The onus will be on each and everyone who is appointed as an election official to ensure that you follow the procedures to the letter. These procedures are designed to protect not only you, but the electoral process itself. Sanim reminded the presiding officers that they will be under tough scrutiny as polling agents and observers will be trained to check that all procedures are followed. The supervisor made the statement while launching the first training session for presiding officers in Suva this morning. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Voters will now be able to get information on where they will be casting their votes during the 2018 general election. The Fijian Elections Office today launched the SMS polling venue locator to ensure that voters have all the information readily available to them. Savarathambo reports. 
Registered voters can now send a free text message to 1,500 to find their polling venue. The important part is that the members of the public have to take responsibility to ensure that they have done the necessaries for themselves. The chair stressed that convenience in voting is a basic tenet of a free and fair election. Chandra also alluded to mixed information about the Fijian elections office now being a permanent office rather than operating only in election year. I have recently noticed that uninformed persons and individuals are seeking explanations as to what an election management body does post-elections. One cannot at one hand benefit from the information we have been regularly publishing and the same breath question why the documents have been prepared and what is the purpose of having it. Supervisor of election, Mohammed Sanim has also highlighted that the SMS platform was a critical service in the 2014 general election. The platform was used over 600,000 times in 2006, 2014 actually. And on election day, 17th of September 2014, the platform was used over 100,000 times. The SMS service is simple and easy to use. A voter enters the EVR number and sends to 1,500. Within seconds, there is a reply informing the voter of their polling venue. Sabira Tambua, FBC News. Still to come, no charges against MP Parmod Chan, says DPP, and Chinese ambassador to build Fiji relationships. Stay with us. Bula, Kero Mai Singatoka, Kero Ndotali Takanavaro Rong on the Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have an energy, Kumination Vutkola, Ndotali Takana Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. I have a silly talent, Nagura Rama in our money, and Roma. We do tell it again and the Venice Valley from Nagudo Rong, Barong in Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti. Radio Fiji One and Domoi Viti in Honga and Vienna. A complaint of criminal intimidation of a public office holder has been lodged against the newly elected National Federation Party candidate Feroz Ghulam Mohammed. It's alleged Mohammed called the Fiji Human Rights and Anti-Discrimination Commission Director Ashwin Raj and threatened him this morning. Ashwin Raj says Mohammed called this morning and demanded to speak to him, but he was out of the office. Mohammed then threatened the staff of the commission that if Raj didn't call him back before 5 p.m. this afternoon, he will upload defaming materials on social media about him. This is an act of, clearly an act of retaliation because I have publicly condemned um, his arguments about the use of hate speech on the grounds of freedom of expression. It is equally disconcerting that um, Mr. Firoz Ghulam Muhammad is a provisional candidate for the National Federation Party. It's highly unbecoming of a uh, provisional candidate to act in the way that he did. When FBC News contacted Muhammad this evening, he refused to comment and got angry, saying the conversation was between him and the commission staff. Meanwhile, police have confirmed the matter is with their criminal investigations department. The Director of Public Prosecutions, Christopher Pride, has decided that no charges will be laid against Member of Parliament Parmod Chand. Chand was arrested by police and interviewed under caution on December 8th on suspicion on having committed seditious offences contrary to the Crimes Act. He was arrested for alleged comments he made at a shop in the Lailambasa on August 14th. The DPP stated that there is insufficient reliable evidence to support any criminal charges against Chant, and therefore the docket has been returned to police. The new Chinese ambassador has vowed his support to the Fijian government and says they will maintain the strong relationship between the two nations. Over the years, the two countries have shared not only bilateral ties, but also engaged in cultural exchanges. Pranita Prakash reports. The Chinese ambassador says they are committed to support developing countries. We are willing to work with our Fijian partners, Fiji friends, work together to achieve common development. As Chinese New Year celebrations begin, a call was made today for everyone to embrace the uniqueness of one's culture. It's auspicious to have New Year celebrations 
I'd like to encourage each one of us here to continue with a culture of unity and peace and also promote acceptance for each other and in our own religious beliefs. Celebrate your common goals more than your differences. I'd like to say that again. Let us celebrate our common goals more than the differences that we have. Celebrations such as the one we are witnessing today provides an opportunity for us to embrace the uniqueness of each culture and, and also helps us to nurture everlasting friendship and bonding. According to the Chinese zodiac, this year is the year of dogs. Meanwhile, the health minister today acknowledged the Chinese government for providing fleet of vehicles and 30 new ambulances that will improve services to the Fijians. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Climate change director Nilesh Prakash says the process of relocating a settlement affected by climate change needs to be fully understood. Speaking at the targeted topics forum on national adaptation plan, Prakash said a number of agencies are involved before settlement can be relocated. He says the Vunindongaloa village relocation cost them around a million Fijian dollars. You know, moving communicator communities from you know from their traditional settings where they've you know spent their entire lives, you know, has a number of impacts. The psychosocial impact is something which is emerging. And we need to be able to understand that and, and how we need to address this in, in, in future relocations. Ahead in sports, Nandi Football hopes to register its first win in the Vodafone Premier League this weekend. But we now join Rachel for the latest in business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up in business tonight. Fiji Link welcomes its second twin otter aircraft. And in growing Fiji, USB to invest in three new campuses. Stay with us. Bula FM number 2 and seri. Here in business tonight, Fiji Link yesterday welcomed its second twin otter that will serve as the domestic roots. The brand new Viking DHC 6 Series 400 aircraft will begin operation later this month. Felipe Nakaso has more. It's the newest addition to the Fiji Airways family group that arrived safely after a 40-hour flight. It is very, it's crucial for the Fiji Airways group to, to have versatile aircraft as part of the fleet with the capacity to land on, on uh, various terrain and varying terrain. And as such, I'd like to reiterate, of course, that for us, the Twin Otter is the aircraft of choice as a large part of uh, Fiji Link's operations. The aircraft is well suited for domestic operations, which is made up of smaller airports, varying runways and short airstrips. This will also further boost Fiji Link's on-time performance. With more aircraft, we're also able to, to better increase our frequencies um, on key domestic routes, particularly to the north, uh, by something around about 30%. But in addition, we do plan to increase the frequency uh, on our trunk route service between Nandi uh, and Suva to seven a day. Compared to our older fleets, it's uh, older series, sorry. It's more stable, more comfortable for the passengers, more faster too, so they can get to their destination quicker. Fiji Link will acquire one more twin otter that will bring the total number of fleet to four. Philip and I, Kasu, FBC News. Four members of the Fiji Development Bank have been officially reappointed to the Board of Directors by Attorney General A.R. Side Kiyum. The reappointments came into effect on January 7th. Robert Gordon Lyon has been reappointed for another three-year term as Chair. Willa Pillay has been reappointed for another two-year term as Deputy Chair, while Inia Nyanga and Rajesh Kumar have been reappointed on a two-year term as Directors. FDB is an autonomous statutory body that operates of which are controlled by the board of directors appointed by the economy ministry. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Thank you. Looking at major market updates, the US dollar was stronger across the board today. It benefited from the euro's weaknesses and the higher US treasury yields. The upward momentum, however, seems to be kept by concerns about the recent stock market volatility. 
Meanwhile, New Zealand dollar lost some ground after the Reserve Bank of New Zealand kept interest rates steady at a record low of 1.75% today. RBNZ had also cut its inflation forecast given their December quarter inflation numbers came in at 1.6% only against the expected 2%. In other news, the National Australia Bank's fourth quarter business confidence came in at six index points compared to previous quarter's reading of eight. However, we'll await the monetary policy statement by the Reserve Bank of Australia tomorrow to see what path our Aussie counterparts take. And that's all from me, Vinaka. Thanks, Sharon. Looking at today's current exchange rate set this morning for the Fijian dollar, with foreign exchange markets still reacting to the fluctuating world stock markets, the Fiji dollar rose against the Kiwi and the Aussie dollar, as well as the Euro. On the commodities market, oil prices slipped to $61.53 a barrel, gold was down to $1,315 an ounce, and silver dropped to $1,633 an ounce. Here in Fiji tonight, the University of the South Pacific will be investing in three new campuses this year. The new campuses will be built in Solomon Islands, Nauru and Kiribati. Vice Chancellor <coughs> Professor Rajesh Chandra says these campuses will add to the new campuses that opened in Marshall Islands last year. Chandra says they will also make improvements to the existing campuses so that universities can provide a consistent learning environment. The Solomon Island campus would be something in the order of about 35 million Fiji dollars. And uh, in Nauru, we are very fortunate that uh, Nauru used this bilateral aid program with Australia to construct that. Uh, so we want, rather than uh, equipment, etc., we are not having to invest. And that's a wrap from business this evening. Now to sports. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, FNRL chair accepts blame for controversy. And Lomani eager to take on Super Rugby Clubs at Brisbane Tournament. This and more coming up. Fiji National Rugby League Chair Filimoni Vosorongo has taken full responsibility over payment issues and other problems faced by the Vodafone Fiji Mbati players during the 2017 Rugby League World Cup. When questioned by FBC Sports about the statement released yesterday by Mbati Captain Kevin Nangama, who labeled the sporting body as unprofessional, Vosorongo responded saying he admits everything. Nelly Tabanga reports. The controversial incident the Fijian body players went through during last year's Rugby League World Cup has drawn attention. Fijian body captain Kevin Langama raised concerns about the players' discontent over the passport, visa and payment issues. FNRL chair Filimoni Vosarong says he takes full blame for what transpired. As the chairman of, uh, of FNRL board, uh, in the, at, at the material time, I take full responsibility for the... Uh, uh, issues that have arisen during the Rugby League World Cup campaign. In a statement, Nengam also called the FNRL board members to be voted out. However, Vosarong says they will wait for their fate until the AGM on April the 7th. And it's at the AGM where the members would decide uh, my fate as the chairman as well as uh, that of my board. Nengam also reiterated the late transfer of $35 allowances provided by the tournaments that were believed to be paid by FNRL. There had been, uh, you know, um, hiccups of transmitting uh, funds across on a weekly basis. 
uh, across to Australia. Mengama claimed the delayed payments lasted the entire campaign and almost pulled them out of an appearance before the Fijian High Commission in Canberra. Despite all this, Wasarongo has confirmed the Fiji Mbati players will receive their payments in two weeks' time. Melita Banga, FBC Sports. Playing Fijian's halfback Frank Lomani hopes the Fijian Tawawa will compete to its level best in the Brisbane Global Tennis Tournament, which begins tomorrow. Lomani says this is a great opportunity for local players to showcase their skills against some of the world's best clubs. Wesel Prasad reports. It's one of the biggest breaks for the local rugby players to rub shoulders with the super rugby stars when Fijian Tuawa makes its debut in the Brisbane Global Tents tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I think the boys are uh, well prepared in the last two weeks of uh, training and uh, being in camp. And uh, I know all the boys are getting there in the, in the fitness and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, all the super rugby, super rugby players in the in the Brisbane Global Flying Fijian, Frank Lomani says they will give their best shot during the two-day tournament. Uh, so fortunate that we were given the opportunity to play in the tent. Like this uh, has been in, in the years, back in the years, uh, to uh, dream to play against all these equality players. The inclusion of overseas-based Chris Kurindrani, Albert Tuisue and William Erarasea will add more depth to the run-on team, says coach John McKee. He's a player I've been watching in the Mighty 10 Cup and, and you know, I want to put him in this environment and, and, and see, how, see how he stacks up against some of our other players. Fiji kicks off its campaign against Brumbies tomorrow. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Samu Karevi and the Queensland Reds have their eyes set on the Brisbane Tens tournament title this weekend. The Vodafone Premier League match between Nandi and Lambasa is expected to be a thriller. The Nandi goes into the clash with a single point after its nil all draw with Rewa, while this will be Lambasa's first match in the league. Luciana Tangida Kimbao reports. The Nandi side is doing all the hard yards to fix the weaknesses from their previous game against Rewa before they battle Lambasa this weekend. We really look hard in our finishing and also in our fitness level. It's not that good. You can know that uh, in Nandi we are training in uh, bad weather and we come here then play in. Uh, very shiny days we're looking at um, our weakness today. Thing. Team captain and Fiji rep Verity Dixon says the scholars draw against Rewa last weekend was not the result they expected. You can see it's a lot of uh, miss. You miss so many call opportunities in uh, first half uh, and also our fitness are not, uh, not up to par. Meanwhile, Nandi president Javed Ahmad says it will be a tough match. Look, competition is very tough. You know, uh, all the teams are tough. Uh, we've seen that last year, and every game uh, is a battle. Uh, we need to make sure that we are on top of our game uh, and to win the uh, Premier League. We need to be consistent week in, week out, uh, and for that we need to work hard. Uh, we need to get back to the drawing bed tomorrow. Nandi will play their first game against Lambasa at 1:30 p.m. on Saturday, and will face Draketi at 1:30 p.m. on the following day at Lambasa's Subrail Park. Luciana Tangida Kimbao, FBC Sports. Fiji Touch Lotto will be the presenting partner and major sponsor for this year's Fiji Sports Awards that will be held in March. Fiji Touch Lotto has made a contribution of $30,000 towards the event. This year, awards will be given in 11 categories. Our company uh, has been involved with the um, Fiji Awards well over... 15, 20 years now, and it's been a great association. Um, we are, um, it's a privilege and an honour to be in this um, uh, event. We will also be given the category sponsorship for the Fiji Tet Store Sportsman and Sportswoman of the Year Award. So they'll be named after this company in recognition of the, uh, the sponsorship. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather. And in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a new dinosaur species has been discovered in the Egyptian desert. Find out more after the break. Bula, kero mai singatoka, kero ndo tali taka na varorong na radio Fiji One and ndo moi viti. Ayawa na rinse. Uh, 
barong na Radio Fijuan nandu mai biti. Na Radio Fijuan nandu mai biti na bonga ni BNN. media tonight, Apple's push with the AirPower wireless charging pad and an increase in competition, wireless charging is about to become faster and even more convenient to use. So say goodbye to losing your cables and it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the Weather World. It was a 50-70 kind of participation of rain and sunshine in today's weather scenario. However, chances of rain to increase are high. Looking at the west for today, it was a mixed bag of cloud and light showers and quite humid. Eastwards from Pekhava to Suba, it was a little cooler but still warm with occasional showers. And up north to Lombasa was the coolest spot in the nation with rain and scattered thunderstorms. At sea, northwesterly winds 20 to 25 knots, occasionally gusting to 35 knots with rough seas. As for the tides, the next high tide will be at 1.39 a.m., followed by low tide at 7.38 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.57 a.m. For tomorrow, it's the Jolly Good Friday and I can't see any reason why you can't enjoy some outdoor activities. Tomorrow's stems, all of the major centers would once again be in the low 30s. And looking further on to Saturday, a sunny day is what I see for now and hopefully it stays that way. And that's all from the FTC Brother World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, should there be harsher penalties for parental negligence? We should be given penalties because it's their responsibility to look after their children. Why they should be given penalties is that no one will be looking after their children if parents are not present. Yes, uh, for your negligence, yes. Uh, I think it's their responsibility to look after the children. And uh, if they not obliged for not doing their duties, they should be, they should be penalized for that. Recapping the main stories, taxi driver dies in horrific accident, hate speech under investigation by police, and presiding officers warned of social media influence. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should those caught vandalizing FRA properties be fined? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day, a view of the Rewa River taken by Malisha Kumar of Nausori. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight from the team and I. Stay safe. Good night. Radio Fiji 1 and 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 Radio Fiji 1 and